Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today we're going to be taking a look at these Legacy of the Void patch notes that are going to be happening to the beta very, very shortly. And I gotta be honest, I've been looking through all of these things. It is absolutely awesome. So a common complaint that I had in the past as well, I've been very vocal about this, is that while the beta is said to be a very long time, it felt to me like they were working on some very minor changes, you know, like balance changes that would really happen towards the release of the game and not so much in a beta phase of the game. Now, I guess they heard those kind of complaints and obviously not just me, but from a lot of people. And they have actually started making some huge changes right here and I'm super excited for it. Now, I want to note right off the bat as well, I saw a bunch of complaining on Reddit about people saying, oh, this is going to be, like, this is going to be imbalanced and that is going to be overpowered and this is going to be too strong. Um, honestly, this is beta. We're, we're going to have to work with weird things and if we want change, you know, the way we get change is by testing out, you know, a lot of different things. So I'm super excited for this. Uh, basically, the first little bit of this article is all about, hey, we're not going to make massive changes every time, but we do it sometimes, which is, you know, the best we can hope for. Uh, first off, they make some Archon mode changes. Now, Archon mode um, is going to be the mode where you can basically play with two people in one team. So it allows you to basically control like the same camp of units. Um, but still make uh, make use of the same base and you're up against two other players that are also handling one base and they basically made it so it's a little bit easier to control this is still a beta phase I've honestly not played this very much myself at all because it's very very long like the, the queue times in it are very very long sometimes it goes up to like 15 20 minutes uh, so I've actually not been playing this very much at all myself but I'm sure it is cool. <laughs> Played a couple of games. Uh, we got some minimap improvements. Now, the common complaint about the minimap is that people are basically not seeing a lot of the units and whatnot. So we're saying right here, uh, we'd like to address the potential improvements to the minimap. We have begun testing anything in this area. Oh, we haven't begun testing anything in this area, but we'd like to share our perspective. So basically, they are looking to uh, improve the minimap vision. Now, that's not, that's not what we're here for. We're here for these changes right here. First off, we got a new ghost ability and a ghost movement speed increase. Now, as it stands right now in Legacy of the Void and in Heart of the Swarm as well, ghosts barely get any play unless it's like in Terran versus Protoss or it's like when a lot of spellcasters are available and, you know, you want to use the EMP to try and basically get rid of the, you know, of the spellcasters. In the past, we would use them a lot or like Terran players would use them a lot against like things like Brute Lords and even even like Ultralisk and all kinds of weird things. But since they've uh, nerfed the unit and changed the unit up, it is very, very uncommon. However, no more. Ghost would gain a new ability that spawns a flying drone on an enemy target. That drone would channel a beam at the enemy unit, reducing its armor by 3. The drone would have a fixed duration and can be attacked and killed. The main purpose of this ability is to help Terran bio armies better deal with the current weakness, high armor targets. So here's the thing. Ultralisk right now are nearly unkillable for Terran players, unless it's with the new Liberator unit, or they're already like so prepared with like an air army that they can actually deal with it. If they're playing a standard bio composition, it feels like to me that, that Ultralisk are too powerful. But I'm very glad to read right here that they've decided not to actually nerf the Ultralisk, but to instead buff the Terran units. So what exactly does this mean? Well, basically you can put like a sort of a certain beam apparently on like a, like a, like a drone on top of an enemy unit, and what happens is the armor gets reduced by 3. Now that may not sound very significant, but it basically means that an Ultralisk armor goes from 8 to 5. Now effectively speaking, that will mean that Marauders especially will actually be able to damage Ultralisk once again. You know, in the past you could actually, um, you know, kill, uh, kill Ultralisk just fine with Marauders. As it stands right now, since Marauders actually do 2 shots instead of 1, uh, it becomes a little bit different because the ultra risk armor basically get distracted or like let get subtracted twice. So as it says right now, Marauders don't do very much. But with this change right here, I'm imagining that you know Marauder Marine will actually be able to deal with the ultra risk once more, and that is an awesome, awesome change. I'm not completely sure how it will uh, come into play in the other matchups. I can imagine it could also be good against things like Immortals and whatnot, but. We'll see exactly how it comes into play, and at the very least, it should make the ghost, you know, more reliable in a lot of situations, except in, like, very, very specific scenarios. On top of that, we have a ghost movement speed increase. Obviously, it doesn't really say uh, how fast this is. I don't think it's going to get, like, stim pack kind of speed, but we'd like to try this one out to see if ghosts can be better combined with other bio units. So, you know, more changes to a unit that is barely used. All good for me, I can't complain. Alright, so this one's cool. This one for the Zerg people out there, which I know most of you are. Uh, this one is awesome. Individual Overlord Transport Upgrades. 
After testing out this popular suggestion, we've decided to give it a try during the beta. I feel like the Night is Worm uh, changed the legacy of the Void. Doom drops have been buffed with the Night is Worm already, so we wonder if overworlds can be served for the smaller drops. So, as it stands right now, you need to be getting the Pneumatized Carapace, which is like the overload speed upgrade, and the uh, Fantral Sax upgrade as well, which allows you to basically put units into an overlord and fly them around and you can drop them in bases. Now, honestly, this is extremely, extremely uncommon, simply because the upgrade is very expensive, it's not very reliable, and like it says right here, the Nidus Worm is already sort of serving that purpose right now. However, what they're basically saying right here is that you can actually, I'm assuming it's only going to be Fantral Sax, so the, the carry... The, the carry upgrade, I suppose, that allows you to put units in an overlord, can be actually upgraded on an individual overlord. So I'm assuming it's going to be something like an overlord that can be morphed into, you know, an overlord, I suppose. Sort of like you morph in a zirkling into a baneling. But except that it will then, like that one overlord will then actually have the ability to carry units. Now, it doesn't say anything about cost and it doesn't say anything about uh, the build time or if it like looks different. I mean, if you can... You know, if you can actually easily distinguish what Overlord is going to be the carry one, it might not be as useful. But this is awesome. Like, this is a great, great change right here. Um, th th just the fact that you could actually go ahead now and, for example, maybe more for like 25 minerals, 25 gas or something, give the ability uh, to the Overlord to actually carry 8 Zerklings, drop 8 Zerklings in the back of the main while Terran moves out. I mean, that is just awesome. That, that actually, you know, forces reinforcements to be halted at least a little bit. And I'm secretly hoping that this is going to be a thing at Hatchery Tech. If this is a thing at Hatchery Tech, I, you know, it would be awesome. We could actually stay at Hatchery Tech even longer. Which I don't know if it's going to be a good thing, but uh, yeah, I would I would actually really really um, I would actually be really really excited to see this. Maybe maybe like um, they give you like a, a layer requirement or something like that, but I guess we'll see. All right, so there we go. This is the one that people were mostly complaining about, and um, I understand where people are coming from. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like it's a little bit preemptive, and I'm glad that we're actually seeing changes like this. So so new upgrade reducing the medevac unloads delay. We are exploring various upgrade replacements for the medevac and tried upgrades ranging from providing straight up power in combat to various utility upgrade ideas that change up the gameplay. We decided to try the re or unload delay uh, to reducing the unload delay because we feel that medevacs don't need to be buffed in strength in main engagement. Um, so as you may remember, I believe this was a thing in the Wings of Liberty campaign, although it could have been Heart of the Swarm as well, where you could basically almost immediately unload a whole bunch of marines or marauders or whatever out of a medevac. It would basically like drop down almost immediately. And that is pretty much what this is. Now obviously this can be extremely powerful and it may be, you know, even harder for, you know, Terran players and or for Zerg players and Terran players and Protoss players as well uh, to deal with the drops. Um, but I honestly can't complain. I think it's pretty cool and I'm very glad they're trying out these kind of things, you know? If it turns out to be too strong, they might reduce that delay or they will come up with something else and just give it like straight up more power. Uh, but this is cool. I'm really, really glad that this is actually being tried out and uh, we'll see. You know, there's only one way to find out if it is too strong is by actually testing it on a grander scale. Alright, next up we have the Disruptor Damage. So that is the big ball unit sort of thing from the Protoss player. Uh, for the Protoss players that basically you can be activating and then it explodes after a little while. Um, the damage has increased from 145 to 145 plus 55 to shields. Disruptors aren't effective in the PvP mirror matchup, so we wanted to target a change that only affects that matchup. Now, I'm, I'm, no, no, like I'm no expert when it comes to Protoss versus Protoss, but 210 damage seems like a lot. I mean, it will pretty much one-shot everything. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> Um, there is obviously a, a straight-up movement speed increase as well to these zealots after getting charged. Uh, so I don't know exactly if you are able to like very quickly split, even if the you know the big ball of doom is still going to be there. But you're at the very least going to have to micro against this unit. Now keep in mind, disruptors are 100 minerals and 300 gas, so very very expensive. They're not cheap whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be cool. And I, well, I'm no expert at PvP, uh, but it sounds like a pretty exciting change, I suppose. All right, so there we go. Ravagers no longer have the armored flag. Now the Ravager is the unit that actually morphs off of a roach. In the past it got nerfed in two ways. First off it got nerfed in the range department. So it went from 6 range to 4 range. But most importantly made it at the same range as a roach. So you know where in the past they would actually be able to shoot over roaches. Because they morph off of roaches so you always have a bunch of them lying around anyway. Where in the past you could shoot over the roaches. Right now you cannot do that anymore. And on top of that the damage got reduced significantly as well. Um, now the Ravager no longer has the armor flag. I'm assuming that's gonna be a little better against like Terran Bio, like like Marauders and whatnot. But I'm not exactly sure what this means. I mean, 
I'm assuming, yeah, they're, they're gonna be better at things like Immortals and against things like Marauders and whatnot. And I, I'm, I'm not sure. It feels like the main reason why the Ravager is so weak is because it's super expensive. It basically is like the cost of three roaches, you know, like if you value gas higher than, than minerals or at least a little, it's like three times as expensive as a roach. Um, and it doesn't really get any more damage done. The ability is not great. You don't really break force fields with it. So I'm not sure if this is enough, but at the very least, you know, it's being worked on. Next up, we have the Viper Parasitic Bomb. Now, the Parasitic Bomb ability is the ability that you can cast from the Viper that does AoE damage to air units. So it's only an anti-air sort of ability, and you can basically blow up Mutalisk and everything that clumps up together in air uh, very, very rapidly. Um, it's especially being seen right now in Zerg vs. Protoss. In larger fights against many air units, the micro... Uh, that we want or that we wanted to see is not happening right now because people just simply spam the viper ability over and over again now the increased um ability cost is actually from 100 to 125 this means that you can if i'm not mistaken you can only put one um parasitic bomb on each viper so you're gonna need twice as many instead of two right now if you get full energy you can cast a bunch of them um this is this is actually reasonable i i am pretty glad that they're doing this because it seems to me right now as well that it seems a little bit too powerful i am not sure however how zerk is gonna deal with like massive protoss armies the reason why i'm saying that is because if a protoss is microing properly right now it's already very very difficult to kill it even with the new viper ability uh, and the way i've been dealing with it is instead never engaging that protoss army and just constantly counter-attacking uh, which seems to work out all right but we'll see how this one comes into play um, yeah, I can't, I can't say very much about it. I'm glad that it's being nerfed a little. Um, or I, it's, it's not so much a nerf. Like, the ability is still as powerful. You just can't carry two on every single Viper. So, you know, you can still do the same thing. You just need to get a bunch more, uh, a bunch more Vipers. <laughs> the armory ship upgrade costs reduced to the match the vehicle upgrade costs. So, yep, fair enough. Spore crawler damage increased from 15 to 30 to bio. Uh, to 15 plus 15 to bio. Now this was something that was added, this right here, was something that was added in the past to basically make the Mutalisk a lot more useful for Z or yeah, versus uh, Zerg. So as it stands right now, Mutalisk are extremely, extremely uncommon in Zerg versus Zerg matchup. They already were uncommon, as you may be aware in Roach versus Roach, you know, in Zerg versus Zerg you would see Roach versus Roach mainly. Um, and sometimes, you know, if a player got like a significant advantage early on or, you know, the game just turned out that way, you will see someone switch into Mutalisk, but it's a massive risk because Roach timings will just sort of kill you. Um, the only thing in Legacy of the Void is that there's two massive changes to it. First off, the, um, the Hydralisk have their upgrades merged. So let's say you want to actually counter someone going for Mutalisk, you can just pop down a couple of spores, save up your gas, make like 20 Hydralisk and do a big timing attack when the one upgrade finishes because you can just push like a full minute and a half or so earlier because you don't need to wait for that second upgrade. Um, so that's the first nerf, I suppose, to uh, Mutalisk and Zerk vs. Zerk. And on top of that, the Nidus Worm is a lot more powerful. So another great counter to the Mutalisk is actually to add on extra queens, go for the Nidus Worm and just Nidus their main. And it seems to me that Mutalisk can almost, imp like, there's no real way for a Mutalisk player to really stop that. Uh, so basically what they're doing right now, at the very least, is that uh, the Spore Crawler damage is being released, or for re decreased from 15 to 30 to 15 plus 15. Which means that Mutalisk will only be taking 15 extra uh, bonus damage. So I believe right now they get 3 shot by a Spore Crawler. I'm assuming this is actually going to make it... Uh, four or five shots? I'm not exactly sure how it, how it turns out to be. Uh, but at the very least, they will survive a little longer, which makes um, for a potential, at the very least, for like counter attacks and whatnot to be a thing. So while the Lurker ad is working well in Zerk vs. Zerk in terms of transitioning out of Roaches, we're seeing that fights are generally trending to be ground based only. Yes, so exactly what I'm saying. We'd like to have an option to go for Mutas in uh, ZVZ as well. I feel like it is mostly to do with the Nidus Worm and the. Um, the Hydra transition, so this may actually, you know, be forced to reduce even more. But at the very least, this is going to be, um, you know, a, a change in the, in the proper direction. So there we go. Work account change displayed two per mineral patch instead of three per mineral patch. Now, this is something that especially new players get confused about. Um, you know how on top of a hatchery it says like um, zero or, you know, six out of 24? When 16 is going to be your optimal mining uh, mining operation. Um, basically, as long as you have two workers per mineral patch, the minerals are going to be mined efficiently. As long as you add on a third one, technically speaking, the minerals will get mined a little faster. But there is a pretty big loss, economically speaking, on each and every mine. 
or like on each, in each and every worker. So you generally speaking don't want to get any more than like 18 workers in the base. Um, so they're changing this up. This is just purely a visual change on top of the hatchery on the uh, nexus and the command center. The last thing, the Liberator AG Surge Radius Indicator is a dotted circle similar to the Siege Tank and Siege Mode, but the ability startup still displays the animation. Um, so this is just purely visual as well. The change is due to performance issues caused by potentially having so many splats in a given spot. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, now, please keep in mind, obviously, none of these changes are viable, but I gotta be honest, all of these changes are awesome. I'm glad they're headed in this direction, I'm glad we see a lot of changes, and please don't worry so much about balance, because this is not what a beta phase is meant for. Once the game gets closer to release, I'm sure we'll see a lot of patches like we saw in the past as well, uh, where, you know, there will be minor changes or minor, minor things that will be um, adding up together, so, you know, you have an actual balanced game when a game gets released, or, you know, at least a somewhat balanced game. But for right now, I'm glad that we are seeing these massive overhauls um, to just core units, like a medevac, like, you know, like, you know, you just read through it, it's awesome, I'm excited. Hope you guys are as well, if you haven't already, hit the like button, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button as well, because I will be giving you continuously uh, more and more upgrades, or updates as well, uh, as far as, you know, Legacy of the Void goes, and other games as well, so, if you haven't already, hit the sub button, and I want to thank you guys all for watching, have an amazing day, do not forget to smile, and I will see you in the next one.